So I switched calibers on this rifle that I built. And I, because I switched calibers, I switched over to six gay tiger. And what I need to do is I need to get my <clears throat> muzzle velocities and all my data inputted for this system for my next match. And I switched over to six gay tiger because I was shooting well with 6.5 Creedmoor, but the availability of the factory ammo that I like to shoot with my 6.5 Creedmoor is no longer available. And they finally made, oh my God. I just can't catch a break today. Look at this thing. Yeah, I have to. I, uh, I brought this in because I was going to replace this at the shop with some fresh nylon. All right, we'll be okay. <laughs> I just need to get three shots downrange. Actually, I'm going to wait to do this last because I don't quite think that my gun is completely broken in yet. So I'm going to wait to do speed. What I'm going to start with is zeroing my gun. Zeroing is gonna be super easy. It should be quick and painless. I'm going to sleeve this so that I can get a nice clean zero without getting a mirage. But our first order of business is getting our, our zero at 100 yards. And then once we get a good zero, then we will get our muzzle velocities. Cause I still think I got a little room. So we're at a hundred yard zero. So I have my glass set to a hundred. So I'm gonna shoot for the left target first. I'm just gonna get a slightly rough idea of where I'm hitting. I got my three shot group, it's really high. And unfortunately I have to go down and I don't have the down. So I'll show you guys what you gotta do for that. I have to move the reticle right. All right, so right half, and then. Uh, and then we'll do zero. It's kind of a little premature to do the real zero stop, but kind of have to do it now because I bore sighted this and because my bore sight apparently wasn't that greatest. I have to get this dialed in real quick. Show you guys how to do zero stop. You gotta loosen. Generally, you don't set your zero stop till you're actually zeroed. Uh, I thought my bore sight might have been a little bit more accurate. So you take this cap off, it's under vacuum, and then you gotta loosen all these zero stop set screws. So this is your four screws on top and you get this little zero stop here. Once they're loose, you can free move this. There's a limiter right here. So if I actually had this gun perfectly zeroed, I like to leave about four or five millimeters here. 
between this paddle and the stop. So I have about a half mil, between a half mil and three quarters of a mil of downward travel if I need to on the scope. Because I need a lot of downward travel, we're gonna move this guy here. We're gonna tighten these screws back and it's finger tight, quarter turn, or get them all finger tight first. And then you can go check this one. That one's already finger tight. Finger tight, quarter turn. Finger tight, finger tight quarter turn. Finger tight, quarter turn. Put this bad Larry back on. It's not going to be perfect because we're going to come back anyway. We're going to have to set the zero stop again anyway. But uh, at least we can get it. Get it in a good position. All right, so I need to come down. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can either put your crosshair on the bullseye that you're shooting for and make your adjustments that way, or you can actually just measure. So I just put it on the bullseye that I'm aiming for and then move the tart up to the elevation. So quick, easy way to do it. We'll shoot again. All right, my three shot group. This time I'm in the red of the bull, but if this is your bullseye, I'm sitting like right here. So I'm gonna go up a 10th and I'm gonna go left a 10th and we'll do 10th adjustments now to get the zero uh, dialed in. This round is pretty hot, but it's a lighter load compared to my 6.5 Creedmoor. The suppressor in the barrel isn't getting crazy hot fast. So unlike a hunting rifle where you can only do like two shots and then have to wait till it cools back down. This gun, we're not doing that. It's, it's actually quite consistent right now. And the barrel's still super cool. So we're not really, it's not really changing that much. All right, we're gonna switch to a different target, which is the one on the right. Make sure that your gun is perfectly level because it does have an effect at distance. And we're gonna shoot another three shot group. Let's go see the targets. You ready to see this? This was my first, first string. This was my first three. I was aiming for this target. What I did was I held my reticle here, kept the gun stable, and I moved the reticle right. Well, I moved it left here. So I held it in place and I turned the turret so that my reticle moved here for windage. And then I reset, held my reticle there, held it in perfect place and dialed it up till my reticle came here. And that's your reverse correction. So after I shot my second three shot group, here's my second three shot group, this target. So all the broken edges are touching. So we know, yeah, gun's accurate, gun's clean, but we wanted to dial it in. So here's my rifle sighting target. It's in MOAs at 100 yards, but again, here we are. We moved it up and left. We're still favoring the right here, so I might give it another 10th. I'm gonna shoot, I'm gonna bump it one more 10th up and one more 10th left, and we're gonna shoot either here or here. If I'm all in the white there, super happy. Moving it a 10th and a 10th might push us to the top left quadrant, so I might just settle with the elevation and just move it over, but again, I'm, I'm happy with that. I want to shoot a little tighter. We're going to see if those adjustments make a change. Um, things I forgot today, I forgot to bring my Kestrel, which I use to get my barometric, my ambient, my density altitude. But because we're not shooting a match and I use density altitude, don't necessarily need that today. So really just need my elevation at location, 
which I already have because I have a bunch of rifles that have been zeroed here in my, in my calculator. So I already have that elevation. I know what the temperature is. And I can, through applied ballistics, I can pull my data from the nearest weather tower so I can get it pretty close. And because it's overcast today, but the storm blew through already, I'll get pretty consistent data for today. And then we'll get my velocities. Um, the reason why I didn't want to do my velocities first is because I was at 154 rounds through this gun before I came here today. And the break in for this barrel is usually around 150 to 200. So just in case my barrel broke in a little bit more during the zeroing process, that means that the uh, muzzle velocity might speed up a hair, which can augment my zero. So that's what we're gonna do is gonna dial the zero, finish the zero, zero stop the gun or the scope so it's all set up. And then we'll strip my suppressor cover off and shoot five shots to get my average velocity. And then what we'll do is we'll run the gun another couple mags through it to ensure that it's buttery smooth. And we'll take another snapshot of velocity and do a final zero check. Damn it. I smushed my tip. I accidentally overloaded this magazine and jammed the tip so I can't use that round anymore. Um. All right, so we wanna go up a tenth. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna shoot another zero, another four shot zero. Oops. Holy flinch! All right, so that's pretty, pretty happy with that locate, uh, that grouping. It's now perfectly centered. My gun is getting a little warm now. So this is a barrel cool by Magneto Speed. All right, so before we let that cool, I'm really happy with where everything's dialed in right now. So I'm gonna loosen up this set screw here. I'm a super OCD, so I don't like when my Scope is a tiny bit off. All right, so my zero stop, sorry, not zero stop, but my zero on my wind is perfectly set now. I gotta loosen up the elevation tart now. This is where I'm gonna set my actual zero stop officially. You can see now from here, the zero stop paddle to the limiter. It's probably hard to see, but where my fingernail is right here is where the limit is. So this is where I'm going to carefully loosen my cross bolt pattern. So now my zero stop can flow freely without changing my actual hard zero. So now you can see from here to here is where I'm gonna set it. So I have a little bit of downward travel and that's where I'm setting it. So your zero stop is your over travel knob, your over travel adjustment. So this, if, if I am shooting super far, I'm gonna have my zero stop tighter because I don't care about downward adjustment so that I have as many revolutions of upward travel as possible. So that's kind of how you have it there. So there's a certain amount of upward travel that you can get out of the turret. And then obviously with your reticle, you have 
holds. Because of this being a competition gun, I do like having a little bit more downward travel. It, again, it, it depends on the application and what you're doing. So get these. Get these just finger tight. We'll go back and do our little quarter turn tightness. You know. And again, all these things with these scopes is you want to be super careful not to over tighten everything. It's, it's usually like a stainless steel component, stainless steel hardware going into aluminum, aluminum soft, even though it's a mil spec class three anno, you just got to be super careful. Always take your time. No Loctite, none of that garbage. So let's get these hair tighter. You can see, so it's, you can see it's spongy. And again, I'm OCD, so. Maybe I'll just do it from this position. I'm trying to show you guys the best angle, but this might be the best position for me to do it perfect. I keep rotating it ever so slightly. So, I mean, I, that's pretty fucking perfect for me, and I'll show you what zero stop is. So, when you rotate all the way to the right, you'll see there's level graduations. It's how many revolutions that you've done with your turret up. So, if we go back all the way to the bottom, there's my zero stop, or that's my zero at my base level. And then I'll show you how much under um, downward travel. So I'm just shy of one mil. So that's zero to 11. I'm at 0.8. It's a little more, I usually only do about half. This time I went a little, little bit overkill, but again, it's not a big deal because this gun shoots pretty flat. So the longest range I'd be shooting in a match is about 1300 yards for this gun is only about six mils of adjustment, which is, or seven mils tops, I would say, which is right here, still within only one revolution. So I got plenty of upward travel, a little bit extra downward travel, not the end of the world. Um, remember your parallax, my parallax is set for 100. And now that this is all gravy, I'll get that fixed up. So we're gonna let the gun cool back down so that we don't melt. We're gonna set up the chrono, let the gun cool down. And then once the gun's cool, I'm essentially gonna shoot another three shot zero with the chrono hooked up, and I'm gonna start recording this data. All right. So we're gonna plug in the magneto speed. So we're on. Press any button, and we're doing a fresh shot string. And uh, get all situated here. We're gonna do a fresh shot string. Uh, 
off before it melts anymore. <laughs> really good data. So we're going to look through, we're going to look through the data here. Took seven shots. My max was 29.80. My min was 29.16. My average was 29.42 and my standard deviation is 19.3. So that's all good data. It was almost cold bore when we first started shooting. So we got our nice average. So 29.42 is our average with a 19.3 SD. So we'll go here. My muzzle velocity. 42. That's pretty good. And this is at 60 something degrees. So if I was shooting in the summertime and it was 95 degrees out, the gun's hotter, you know, my muzzle velocity is going to be faster. But again, when you use a applied ballistics, it'll, it'll augment that. Uh, it'll interpolate it. So bullet diameter, it's a 243, 109 grain, 1.326 inches long. Muzzle velocity is 29.42. Powder temp is 65. It's a G7 drag model. The BC is 2.8. Yay. Zero range is good. Enable zero atmosphere allows you to enter all this data in. So altitude, barrow, temp, humidity. So that's all in there. So if I back out, here's all my guns, my Black Bear, 556 Special Purpose, my Terminus, and my Weatherby Backcountry. So I click here, uh, I have a 6.5 Creedmoor barrel for this gun, so I have all that data already in this one. Um, but now we're sh shooting the Hornady ELD match. And then because I don't have my Kestrel with me, which is important, you can go up here, you can hit acquire atmosphere from weather station. So if you have connectivity, you can pull your data. So it just gave me a DA of 435 feet, 64 degree temperature, wind speed is 2.46 miles. And we got all these different, um, you know, we can do enable spin drift if we're shooting really far, Coriolis effect. You know, if there's um, wind, you can click here for wind angle and you can point the direction it is at the shooter, but obviously wind changes downrange. And then I go to trajectory and that shows me all of my yardages here and then 7.7 .7 mils up for a thousand yards with this gun, with the current wind, at, it'll be left to right for, you know, whatever. So after you finally get your muzzle velocities and your zeros, you need to verify at distance. So we're gonna go over to the 400 yard range, put up a paper target and uh, check. I do believe it's my appointed duty To tell you when I'm feeling kind of gloomy A swing and beat is all I need to soothe me Then all my cares and worries seem to lose me